Welcome to Drupal Nights. Tonight we have Renato talking about the feeds module and all the lessons he has learned using it. Take it away. Hi, how's it going there? Happy Thursday, first of all. How's everyone doing today? Good. 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 Great, great. Uh, so, first of all, I want to ask one question. How many of you have the lucky have been lucky enough to actually use uh, yeah, migrating data before or importing data to your Drupal site? Raise your hands if you've been there. Great. How many of you guys like that? Like that information? Nobody? Oh, there we go. We got one brave one. <laughs> Do you use Fit or Do you use something else? I use Fit. All right, awesome. So I gotta be more careful with you guys. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, first of all, I want to show you one thing. What I think I call the 1500, 15,000, 1500 hour mistake. That's something that happened like, basically that's very personal to me and my friends because we actually spent 1500 hours before we actually found out this actually cool module. And one thing that I just wanted to show is that, uh, unfortunately we actually split at the time before all of us, so it's not only me too. So one thing that I just wanted to show you too is that uh, the story basically how you can save, uh, if I save time, basically show the execution of the fits module and also give you some tips on how we can you, you know, how can you use the, um, you know, modules for the future if you have some questions too. So basically like here's the first story that I'm actually currently working on. <laughs> so this is the Monk Shoe T-shirt store. It's a project that I'm currently working on and uh, basically with Rob right there who's sitting right there <laughs> is the guy with the T-shirt. Where is the man? <laughs> so, uh, one thing that happens too is like Rob wants to start like he's basically like his t-shirt company he has really cool designs, and here's the problem: he has like 500 more than 500 designs in his computer. It's gonna take a long time to actually import all this data into a commerce site. And this is basically like, come on, this is really cool. This is cool, really cool t-shirts. We want to get them out of like really fast. So one thing that uh, this is gonna be one of the cases I'm gonna be talking about. Another case that was going to be for, um, that is going to be uh, really close to what I'm working on, and this is something projects I've been working on too, is with Fun Wisdom. Here's basically like um, one example of like, I don't know if you can see it well. <laughs> I don't know, like, okay, basically what we do, we collect the data from different sources, different platforms like Angelis, we funder, and aggregate those information into our site. Now, what we do is like after we get address information, we have to report it. Now this is where the 1500 hour mistake happened. We used to like, we used to grab the data from different platforms and import it directly into our site by using just a single content type, one at a time. It took a long time to get like, well at least we got like 200 before we actually started importing modules. We used the fits import module. Um, here's basically like our logo there and here was basically our primary concern. So, Let's begin actually using the fits import. So, well, like everything, it all starts with data. Now, one thing that actually, like, fortunately, what we happen is that, like, my friend Robert actually right here had a, a file where he had calls every single piece of like data he has, like SQ numbers. You can have like shirts, and let's say like he calls me and said, Renato, you know what? I have a file with all this information that I need to import into my site, into my commerce site. Here, have fun. Now, so basically this is how I feel after I'm moving stuff, moving every single piece of data all right into my in front, in front of me. So, so what I'm going to do, basically I'm going to use something called the FITS module. The FITS module is going to be like, basically was created in, uh, by Frank Ferraro in was released in 2009, and with the sole purpose of making it easy to import uh, also like aggregated data into like to create nodes, taxonomies, users, all that kind of stuff. It was created as a replacement. I don't know if you guys have heard of Fitz API, or Fitz map Mapper before. All right, good. You guys were lucky. So, so basically it was a good way to actually start importing this information. Now, let's start getting started first of all. So. The requirements that uh, you need basically in order to start a feeds module is going to be C tools and job scheduler. Uh, one easy way to install modules is going to be using like you, you can use Drush. It will automatically install it. I'm not going to talk about Drush. If you guys want to know more about that? Actually, one was one of the previous Drupal nights. I was touring tour into Drush, which I highly recommend you to learn it. Uh, but anyways, that's one of one, uh, another. That's one of the tools you can use. Another one you can use uh, uh, another solution you need to do. It's used the fits importer. 
that's going to be what is going to help you to start importing the data. And also, like once we have all that set up in place, then you can start importing data. So once you start importing data, this is the first thing that you're going to look like. You're going to see. You have your, uh, you know, it's basically like right now you cannot see it, but uh, it has a nice uh, structure, a nice menu. It tells you what it does. Tells you what you're going to be doing with this, uh, you know, with this menu. So I'm going to just go with this. So like I'm going to go, with the, um, I'm going to show you what is the positions that you need to do with it. So the architecture is very simple. You basically have a basic settings, a fetcher, a parser, processor. This is a four-tier, um, four-tier like. Uh, structure with uh, hooks inside a feeds importer. Each one of this, uh, the cool thing is that you can actually set up, configure each one of these sites, it's one of these tiers, and it will not affect the other tier. It's one is independent of the other. So it gives you like much flexibility of what you need to import, what you need to do, what you need to uh, you know, import them. So basic settings, uh, <laughs> cannot see it well, but the basic settings is basically you have the name, then the description, then one thing that is very important in here is having the standalone form. And what it means is basically when you start importing this, uh, instead of like holding into a content type, once you create a content type and put a form there, you just have a standalone form which you just import your site. Or if it's an RSS, you can just put the link to it. Uh, it's very, very, very straightforward. Uh, here's a periodic import. And um, this is allows you to start importing data in a timely manner. So you can set up the time when you want to import your own data. Now, here's one pitfall too that I really highly recommend. If you're going to import a file, you know, data from a file, uh, try not to like do the periodic import because what what happened in the fun wisdom, in the case of fun wisdom, was that there was uh, we actually imported a file and we set up to the timer to import the same file every 30 minutes. So now you see how fun it was having like a same copy of like 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 five hundred like hundred copies of the same item, and how much fun it was to delete all of those. So that's basically one of the pitfalls I basically you want to avoid. Uh, another one is basically like is uh, if you want this to run as soon as you click on it, you want to submit uh, starting point and then submit. And the third and the, this one is you cannot see it well, but it's basically a check that says. You, you want to like, uh, once you start clicking on it and start importing there, it, it, sometimes it shows a load bar. So if you don't want to see that load bar, you can, actually, you can actually just click on it and it will load on the background. That's one good feature tool you can do. Now, where should I get the data? That's, that's basically the fetcher, what's that asking for? Once you, uh, basically, where should you get the data? You can have the option for the core, which is in local, which is in, in mode, and um, you can use a file, or you can use some external source, which you can be using the HTTP connection, remote. Uh, here's some of the things you can do, that like you can actually download RSS with HTTP connections, which is pretty cool. You can upload it in load time. And this is the reason why you have a timer, too. If you have an RSS, uh, you actually download from RSS or an API, you can use the HTTP, and it will up keep uploading every like you can configure to upload uh, data every 30 minutes, which is actually pretty cool. And if you have a file too, like if you can also do that. And uh, here's another type of contributed, um, other type of like uh, places you can actually get from. You can play with it. Now here's the structure of uh, how the uh, fetcher looks like. It will give you like in this case because of Rob, he actually gives me the option of saying like. He gave me a file, so now I'm actually going to use the file clicking here, and then determine what is the type of like the file that's going to be accepted there. Cool. Now, how should I read and interpret the data? Now that's the way of like parcel works. How should I read the data? Now, we have a parser. Like in this case, we uh, the core usually comes with um, RSS atoms and CSV, and also some other type of like other type of like forms. But basically what it means is like if you have a format there, if it's an RSS, XML, or type of platforms, how the form, how the parser is going to read your data and have to put in a simple way so it can be easily imported into Drupal. And uh, yeah. So here's the menu for it. Here's uh, how you can see the parser. Right now, I'm selecting the CSV file since it's one of the files I'm getting there. And, um, and yeah, and after that you can see like this is the way you have 
breaking the um, this formula is going to be breaking there. Now, one case that I want to suggest to you is that uh, in Flash Wisdom too, we have like because we have different platforms, usually they have a different type of style, different type of formats in the data. Now, this is a great tool when it comes to like where it's, what is that type of like information you can download for like XML, you have like other type of formats, and you can like even download it for like different type of APIs. Or, so the cool thing is that this is a great tool to interpret all the data you have, and it gives you flexibility there. And if you have all the type of like information that you can get it for, uh, then you can actually see other contributing modules. Sir. So now once you have the information, now you know where it comes from, and then you know how to interpret it. Now the question is, what should I do with this data? What should I create with this data? And this is what the processor does. You can create, like, basically from a core, you can create a nodes, you can create taxonomies, you can create users. And right now, because we are actually importing into a commerce site, because we want to sell these shirts. Come on, this, we, want to, we want to have we have a business here. We want to sell these shirts, we want to make it fast. So we actually got to use, in this case, the commerce module. And, okay, so because we're using the commerce module, usually the core comes with node, taxonomy, and, uh, and users. We're actually going to select the one from commerce here. Once we have that in place, uh, we set up basically like what the processor is going to do. Now, we have the bundle to set on shirt. That's a product that I created there in order to import the data. Now, we also, we have the option of like if something like uh, already exists, do not create anything, do not update. Or you actually, like for example, you, uh, you already created a, sh you created a shirt and you just change the price because the market goes up or no, goes down, then you have the option of updating what you already have in place. So here's a pretty cool tool in there. Uh, you uh, basically select a format you have, that you can set it up as plain text, it could be filter HTML, whatever format you put in there, and uh, you select the product type. That's a product type that we level up, and you can even set up who is the one who's gonna create it there. In this case, I'm usually using Anonymous because Anonymous is the standard one I use for um, importing that. And uh, here, right here, very, very hidden is where taxes are. I didn't want to scare you, so I just put it right below there. <laughs> so now, what should I do with it? This is the last part. This is when it comes to mapping. You want to, you're already getting the data from a file, a CSV or a RSS. You want to map it. You want to show where the data is going to go into, your, into the nodes. So one thing that, uh, one thing to have in mind in here is that um, when it comes to mapping, is that if you have a CSV file, try to keep a structure when you, uh, when, once you start putting your data. I mean, so with the titles, for example, if you have like a product title, product underscore title, you want to have that clear, that saying that once you write in here, product underscore, ti uh, product underscore title name, goes directly into product name. So if you keep that structure, it'll be much simpler for you to start importing data. And also one thing too, because this is a commerce uh, site, you want also to have this thing called unique, unique. This is going to be the This is going to be the determinant, determinant that that's going to tell whether it's going to be like upgrade, it's going to be updated, or it's just going to be like, um, you know, you can, it's going to create a new node, or it's going to create a new entity in this case. Um, also, a good, a cool tool that you can use is uh, called um, Fits, um, Fit Stamper. So for example, in this case, we have the data, like for example, you usually like, when you write the, uh, the, the prices of the of your product, you write like, it's, it's cost $10, you're just gonna write 10. That's usually the way it works when it comes to like, you know, the human mind. So, but the problem is that price import, it's only going to detect, you know, it's gonna detect saying that um, it's going to be detecting only 10 cents because it's only getting on cents. Now, you can actually, you can usually like, um, you can set up a uh, fit stamp or saying like, if you have this type of travel, this is some minor travel, but it happens. So once you have an import, uh, an import that says like, it's, if it's gonna have less than a, less than some cents, then just multiply it by a hundred, and then you get basically a full price of $10. $10. So that's one way you can use this. Let's see. And here's the final thing that you will see. Once you have your shirt importer, your shirt importer, then uh, you can um, basically like see this page. And here's when you click on import. You select your, your uh, CSV file. And um, 
wait for it. This is the time you're about to celebrate. And here you go. You're the proud owner right now, but because I have only like uh, CSV with three, uh, three items, I can only create three, but this is a result of basically what you're gonna see. All three imports with all the respective, uh, respective tools, price, and respective fields are gonna be imported there. Now uh, here's another case of like fun wisdom. When uh, you have like basically we do imports like for 200 or 300 types of like uh, 300 types of products. And we do this every day because we have to update things constantly. And that's going one way to keep up, and up to date. So now I'm gonna give you like a, basically I wanna give you something called a, one thing I call a 15 hour like, a 1500 hour reward. This is something that I want you guys to have uh, some, by telling these stories, by showing the executions and some like some tips that I already shared with you that, that can actually save you some time. That can actually like, give you some like the opportunity to you know execute and do something like that. So if you guys are actually doing some projects, if you're actually doing some like projects like uh, closing in the future in the next two weeks, I would definitely like I would personally like to know what you guys are doing and how can I help you with this type of like features. And also, like, if you guys are like, like moving data shouldn't be that hard. Like, should it, like timing constraints shouldn't be that hard. If you have really something awesome to share with the world, uh, this, this it should be simple, very simple, to import your data and after that share it with the world once again. So, well, uh, thank you very much. This is basically it. So, I'm gonna give you my part of the information, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, um, you mentioned about the port, like, yeah, I remember that you mentioned about it. <laughs> so, um, do you know, like, um, what type of, like, text uh, to format they were using? Like, I, I was, uh, one thing that we did have one time was very uh, uh, strong problem before, is that when we save using Microsoft Excel, it didn't save on the format that we wanted as a CSV, so we had to use a te uh, text editor and change that to CSV. Uh, in order to, See, I don't find that completely convincing because <clears throat> the, the way I do it is so when you go back to that screen of the import screen, I, I download a, a template. So right. I, I have their template, and if I just put in some dummy, and, and I recommend that across the board for people mm -hmm. to should, when they, they make a site um, to create a, 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 a theme per content types to make it easy for other people to import things. But once you get that template file, and say you have like three things, title, uh, date, and something, and you just manually put in one field for each one, that imports fine, even with Microsoft Excel. Okay. When you have a special character, it breaks the import. So uh, I, I think your point about Microsoft Excel isn't quite the problem. Once you get an ampersand that's just raw code, it breaks the import, even if it's the 50th item in like a 50 item of okay. the CSV file. Uh, so I would love, but Giles seemed to be nodding. Uh, anybody <laughs> who works on these <laughs> module, it is the most finicky thing in the world. If you get one of those titles and you have an uppercase uh, on one of the title fields and the CSV file has it in a lowercase, it breaks the import. Uh, it's, Finicky beyond belief. There's, I, I've run into finicky things with Excel and CSVs, and I found that one of the things that seems to always work uh, on why is put it into Access, and Access does a better job I've been looking for something of like exporting CSVs. For access, yeah, okay. even though it's Microsoft still, but Access does a better job. So sometimes when I run into these things, I literally load the table into Access. But that's a scary world. Export it. Access is in the term. Microsoft Access. So, is it, okay. but so what do you do in, my, in that world? Well, you got Excel, well, Excel is that world, or Excel on the machine, so. One, I'm one just one saying, if, that, if you happen to use Microsoft Access, or No, but that's exactly User. what I've been looking for, is because I know something would clean them up, but I can't find it. One workaround that we were using on here on the same time, we were saving in Excel, and we couldn't figure it out, it takes a while. Uh, 
uh, if you save it as uh, MS DOS. And that's version. the only one that actually does work. It doesn't yeah. deal with the ampersand problems. No, we have to do uh, additional data modeling before it gets into. And that's the part, part I want to avoid. Regular. It's so yeah. Usually it's uh, like some data placing you have to do before you import. The one thing is that data is only as good as you imported it. Sometimes bits will not catch all these several error mistakes. But um, there's something like Paul, like I mentioned, like it's like bits tamper that can actually try it. Have you tried it before, Deb? I love the tamper. It, it doesn't deal with the, the, uh, cleaning up a CSV file. Okay. Well, yeah, I got No, didn't. Untruth. Um, Good. Please just. Do sing the uh, PH. P native CSV reader. And if you give that a bad character, it barks and feeds temper ever even exactly. sees it. Right, that's true. An idea as you're encountering these problems with recording, so it's going to die on a certain note. So all 30 nodes before are going to be in your system, and then the last one is the last. You would think that's true, and it, 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 it is. It is. So you get you get all the ones that worked until it until it died. So then you're like, great, now how do I how do I clean this out and start over? Um, the Bell module has the Bell generate, and it has the setting that says go and generate me one node and delete all the others. So you can clean out your database and, and do it again and do it again. So as you're testing your it's an easy way to kind of clean up what's there. So you've got to, you create that one dummy node or you can organically leave the little bits in there. And then you run your importer again and you're like, okay, well right now I've got 50 of them. So go fix that line, clean them out using the well generate and delete the method, and then, then you can try to get a hundred. So I, I recognize it doesn't solve your problem on why is it breaking, but as you're figuring out those line items. Uh, the one thing I have noticed with anything if you are Copying something out of the word, you know, it uses curly quotes, whereas the real world <laughs> likes straight quotes. Um, and that is one of the biggest problems we have at our company, that we're importing different things. Right. Uh, a lot of times ours is XML instead of keys. So you should slowly begin to learn what the problematic kinds of characters are. And if you open your CSV in a text editor and do, uh, you know, find that first instance Bad character, do a control find for the rest, and then you can, you can replace all those. Okay, catch up. But there's about six or seven of them. It's, it's the comma, it's the apostrophe, it's the ampersand, it's the. Uh, so it's very tedious. I do have a, a word of caution of bringing things into Excel. If you happen to have zip codes in your CSV, <laughs> and any of those people happen to live in New England, Excel truncates the leading zero, and now you have four digits. Yeah, and I, every time I do that, it goes great, but those are the comments for what I already got rid of that. That's another example of where access doesn't work. Yeah. So, are you familiar with access head? It's like three. No, that's all Microsoft thing. I don't think anyone should be familiar with it, but. Another thing you can do is. So I have a question. How about importing photographs that are images? Yeah, you can use simply like a, you can use images by using the link. And how does that work? Um, like one thing we do like uh, when it comes to like importing images, uh, we uh, have like import like we have the images links in the CSV file from the website respective websites, and then it would download it automatically. Now you have images inside. Um, because in your own hard drive, uh, usually like you can use um, one thing that I've tried to do is like you should usually use uh, format for like uh, the images that I have and create a link. In, like I just imported it into my uh, Drupal site and then call them from the site in the link and then in Drupal fields where they actually tap in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the end, you're going to put them inside at your site, so might as well just call them from there. Convert the image to like base 64? Um, or does it find that actual image? Fi find the actual, it will find the actual image and then download it all of it. So if you want to keep, if you want to keep that way, then keep it actually a real like straight format in there. Mm -hmm. One tip I would recommend is once you've imported it, disable um, it. So go back into that that first screen and actually disable it because it it will keep re-importing. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, one thing that's like uh, when it comes to reimporting there is that's actually the timer, the periodic timer. Uh, like I mentioned, like before, it's, it's like not the timer. It's cron. It oh, was, yeah, cron. Yeah, that too. Cron, and if you don't have it set for uh, unique imports um, to overwrite, it right. just it, it just should be a good habit. Always disable it once you've done it. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's true. Any. What the largest number of nodes you imported? Uh, I, I actually run wild when I first tried. It was um, it was mostly like a thousand, two thousand. And uh, one thing that it could happen it is that yes, it really <laughs> it breaks after like really large number there. Even though it's basically it's batch processing that it's designed to do that. Um, it's still like it will break if you actually put large numbers of it, especially when a CSV file. With the RSS, though, it's going to run smoothly, though. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever used pub sub um, as a feeds? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, like it's included in the core in uh, fits model RSS. You can have uh, you. Can, you know, That's an interesting application. Right. Yeah. Mean, there's not a huge volume, but uh, it takes a lot of little different steps. But I think it's a testament to the flexibility that actually works because there's all sorts of parts. What was the use case for that? So you had so it was an organization that does a monthly newsletter. And yeah. They always wanted to add that content to the website, but not as just a newsletter. They make it a red piece of content. Yeah. So just direct one of the so on the distribution list. One of the destination mailboxes is basically a website, and then you set up the feeds to go and pull that, pull the newsletter out, and then. If you're in a rabbit hole, though, mail handler is a rabbit hole. Fifteen hundred hours, you just think you're in heaven. This is thousands. <laughs> uh, but Pantheon and Opium have a. I didn't spend 15 minutes, I was just, it was there, yeah, yeah, it, I was amazed, it was one of those things that yeah, people reference it. Cool. Yeah, 
get into there, there's some potential idiosyncrasies, but they're not means of Drupal. They're actually related to different email clients comparing these from the first one. So you can use potentially there, but the actual process. All right. So, like, what is the email that you set up? What is the email that you're CCing on the list? Mm -hmm. um, just any mailbox. Okay. And then you tell it that's the name of the mailbox. So when the mail handler goes and pulls the mailbox, and it's smart about not repeating it, it found it already, it only gets it once. It marks it, I guess, as red or yeah, yeah, marks it yeah. red. Mark, marks it when you read the mailbox. Yeah. It could be red, so even though it's mm -hmm. the mailbox, it doesn't pull it in. Which email client did you use to do that? The email client to mail it out with? To receive it. Uh, in, in Google is the one that really works well with it. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he has level nine end process. Gmail works yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Use that. better as the, the in terms of setup. Yeah. Um, which email client? So this is just, the email is going out from Civi CRM, Civi mail, mm -hmm. but that doesn't affect the mailbox yeah. as it's in. That's and it's not really using the email client to read it. It's really to take the content apart and of ignoring the stuff it doesn't care about. It's smart about just taking the clean body. Your uh, newsletter idea remind me that Richard has a project where he has mailing lists and he's putting uh, like a town and putting them all on the website. Are yeah. you using the case model for that? No, because not everything I wanted to do was publish as content for my mail stream. So I'm, I looked at it and found it couldn't quite do what I wanted. So I used some of the things by looking at feeds to extend it. But it's similar to what feeds is doing okay. for this content that is to be published. I remember you, you showed that at another meetup. And yeah. I can see, wow, it's a similar use case yeah. that you were doing. Um, under what circumstances has one given the stead gives them the link? Um, I great. Um, module. Oh, the migrate module? Yeah. So um, my grid module is uh, one great tool when you like, I have personally used it as much as I use this because like one grid module is a great way to actually use, you move your data once, but this is a great way of you actually collecting data like every, like constantly, like every single time. So this is one, uh, for example, you can have a timer there, but um, I guess you can do both of them like at the same, you can actually use both of them to actually import data there. There's just different, it's just have different flavors to it. Migrate more wants to take data in yeah. the form that it was and put in a very similar yeah. result. Exactly. And as soon as you start, it's coming from a database, going to a database. Oh, that's a type thing. But yeah. feeds let you reformat and create different content types. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have two tips. Um, one is using the CSV data export module to get your data uh, out of wherever it is into a CSV file. So it's, it's a great module, to, and, it, and so you use views, and instead of creating a view, you create uh, a CSV file. So, and, and it just formats it perfectly, and then you can just import it into wherever you need to. So that's uh, the data export module. Um, another tip is when you're setting up that, that matching thing, right. that with taxonomy, I find that a really cool tool that, so there's a, an option setting, so that say you're importing something into a taxonomy, um, there's a setting to say if it doesn't exist, you create a new one. Uh, so that's a really important setting to set up, to enable, so that all the terms you're importing create new taxonomy terms as opposed to being rejected. And good luck with dates, they're trial and error. <laughs> that's a timestamp. And phone. Well, that's not too negative. Uh, 2,000 hours, maybe, but. <laughs> 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 
Sam Bose is chipping that stone. <laughs> Depending on what module you used to add a foam field, some of them don't support fields, and right. so you cannot use fields to put data in. Really? I found that out the hard way. <laughs> be interesting too if the the field it's going into you are having the data as a, a ten digits only, no parentheses, no dashes, no dots. Yet your data that's in your CSV yeah, is, is all all, all sorts of spaces stuff. and yeah, whatever. Like right. Yeah. So that's something you have to keep in mind. I'm thinking of leading zip codes. So if you already had the conversation that you know you remove the if you have it saved as a number the, the leading zero is truncated. But it's even more than that. Like if you guys have code ten, it looks like letters. Yep. So right. keeping in mind what the the field type needs to come data it should expect. I think that's an important lesson because I, I see it totally failing. Well, you know, your sample piece of data you look at, you know, all five of those look the same way. Somewhere down that line is a hidden one. It's in your or unexpected. In two other settings I find uh, that they can is the, the, the text filter. Um, it, 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 to me, it breaks the import a lot if it's not set to the full WYSIWYG or something. If it's just plain text, uh, for some reason, uh, that breaks it for me a lot. Um, and the other thing is I always change it from anonymous, because some things don't import with anonymous. It has to be an actual user. So I, to, as a default, I, I generally change it to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Why do you use like uh, uh, it, it's, it's use cases where it breaks it, anonymous won't pull it in. Uh, it, it well, if anonymous doesn't have the right to publish that, exactly. they, yeah. sometimes the permissions later on can say, no! Okay. But it, it, it's a hidden no. thing. Yeah. It's, not, it's not as straightforward as yeah. just like, oh, that person doesn't. It, it's hidden. And just to avoid the hiddenness of it, I can yeah. put it as me. Because uh, um, I tell you, uh, yeah. everything you presented is like, oh, this is how it should work. Exactly, yeah. All There's the so work many begins once it doesn't work, and it's like, <laughs> oh dear God. So luckily you posted your number, because... Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We will, we will, yes. Right. <laughs> What's the guarantee? No. Yeah, it's actually my number, so... <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to ask you for a bat signal next. <laughs> Can we circle back around to the, the permissions thing? You guys said you import everything as anonymous. I'm curious if you happen to have a permissions table Edit oh, Does that mean any user in your site can edit that node? Um, no, actually, no. It's one of the things I do it for anonymous is basically for tests inside. But uh, so some of the edit is like, uh, no, it doesn't have the permission for edit all. It's just only permission to put stuff. So, and the reason why we do it also is because we wanted to create like a crunch-based type of style, so people can start importing it. But uh, we definitely it says that we need to configure some of the permissions there so we don't allow any any other people to start doing that. Yeah, I mean I, I can see it, you know, definitely could work really well, but you're opening up doors for, for mistakes that could be potentially challenging. Correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, so one way to get to to kind of get away with it is not matter who the actual author is. Just change your theme to not display who's the one that actually offers it. Then no one will ever know. So it could be admin, it could be you, know, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, is there any more questions there? Or? All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much.